Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sermons from My Heart. This is Craig Condon speaking. Today I'm going to talk about how Jesus is the solution for all of our problems. My message is based on Colossians chapter 2, verses 8 to 23. Let's listen to that passage now. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit, according to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. For him, in him dwether, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, who is the head of all principality and power. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. So let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon of Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substances of Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom all the body, nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments, grows with the increase that is from Christ. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concern things which perish with the using, according to the commandments and doctrines of men. These things indeed have an appearance of wisdom and self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever had a problem that was so bad you couldn't solve it yourself? Did you wish that the problem would just go away? Well, the Apostle Paul has the answer in the passage we just heard from Colossians chapter 2. He argues that the cross is the answer to our deepest needs. It took the sacrificial love of Jesus as expressed on the cross for people to come back to God. This change will provide us with the strength, wisdom, courage, love, and other resources that we need to deal with our problems. The heart is the root of the problem. God understands this and he goes for the root cause of our problem. He promised to take away our hearts of stone and he did this by joining us to Christ's death. Christ's death was a sacrifice in the style of the Old Testament sacrifices. These rituals involved sacrificing animals to atone for the sins of the people. The problem was that the priests in the temple were human, and they had to atone for their own sins as well as making sacrifices for the sins of the people. The view at that time was that God was an angry God who was only satisfied with sacrifices. Jesus was the perfect, sinless sacrifice for the sins of the people, and his sacrifice on the cross had a much deeper meaning than the Old Testament sacrifices. When we have problems, the cross meets us at the point of our deepest needs. First, the cross is love at its deepest and purest. It is the kind of love that allows God to forgive us and reconcile us to him. This love allows us to love others and receive the love others have for us. The second need is for forgiveness. We are sinners, and in times of trouble this reality often hits close to home. Through the cross God forgives us and nails our sins to the cross. Once these sins have been nailed to the cross, God forgives them and forgets them. The third need is for community. Families can be torn apart by our modern society. In larger towns and cities people often don't know their neighbors. Our thirst for material happiness has isolated us. We need to be connected to other people. The good news is that we are all united and equal at the foot of the cross. Just like he was lifted up on the cross, Christ draws us to him and to each other. 
The fourth need we have is a cause to live and die for. That cause is the cross. When we center ourselves in Christ, the more sensitive we become to the needs of people around us. We die to self, sin, and pride. The love that is motivated by the cross becomes our reason for living. God has taken the initiative through the cross to unite us to Him. One of the problems we have to deal with in our spiritual lives is false teachers. They exist only to cheat us out of the life we have in Christ. They claim to know God, but they aren't necessarily mature in the faith. There are countless people who know the scriptures but don't apply them to their lives. Their leadership is based on so-called visions and revelations. These claims are false because Jesus was God's final and complete revelation to mankind. Jesus is the only person we can trust. He is the only one who warrants our allegiance and trust. The person who knows only one verse of scripture and applies it is more spiritually mature than the one who knows many verses and applies none of them. The recent information explosion caused by the internet and the 500 plus TV channels we can receive has made it more difficult to know whom to trust, especially when it comes to biblical teaching. Many so-called preachers and theologians have gained a platform by teaching things that are opposite in what is written in the Bible. We must not let charm and charisma determine what teachings we will accept. We must put ourselves under solid biblical teachings so we can be rock solid in our faith. One of the false teachings we have to be aware of is le legalism or the rules and regulations of Old Testament law or fundamentalist denominations. Christ is the substance by which all things are measured out, not rules or regulations. Paul rebuffs four deceptions that undermine Christianity. Philosophy, deceit, the traditions of man, and the basic principles of the world. He does this with a definitive statement regarding the identity of Christ. Believers have everything they need in Jesus. Believers are buried in Christ through the water of baptism and are raised to new life through faith. Sin, death, and hell do not have a claim on us anymore. God made a public spectacle of his enemies when Jesus was triumphant over death. We do not have to submit to anything Jesus has conquered. Jesus has solved our biggest problem, and he can help us solve all of our smaller ones as well. Jesus has united all believers through his death and resurrection. He erased our sin debt. He has created a relationship with us, and that relationship allows us to live the Christian life. He gives us the resources we need to defend ourselves and to be successful in life. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you for listening to this episode of Sermons from My Heart. The text of this sermon, as well as the text of other sermons I have preached, can be found on my website, www.sermonsfrommyheart.wordpress.com. Comments and suggestions are always welcome. You can leave the comments on my website, or you can send them to me by email at craigcondon1965 at gmail.com, or you can leave them on the Sermons from My Heart Facebook page. Until next time, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.